Welcome back. This is gonna be the first of two video lessons on choosing hay for your horses. Now, before we get started, it's always worthwhile to talk about hay quality. We always wanna feed horses good quality hay. That means it's free from mold, free from dust, free from dirt, and free from debris. Mold can be particularly bothersome for horses. It can affect their nervous systems and cause digestive disturbances. So we wanna be careful that we're not feeding any moldy hay. And then if you think about dirt or dust, think of your horse's respiratory health. If their noses are in that dusty, dirty hay and they're inhaling that, that can cause complications. And then when you think of how hay is, is cut and baled, sometimes it might pick up debris or twine from a bale. You don't want horses eating that because that can cause a lot of digestive disturbances. Now, really important to be able to identify what moldy hay would look like. And you can see here in this image, brown, gray, black spots. It's warm to the touch, has a musty, dirty smell. You never want to feed that to a horse. Now, why hay might get moldy? It gets wet, it's not stored properly. You can think, you know, if it's baled and wrapped, that wrapping can have puncture holes in it to allow the mold to grow. Or typically what you see a lot of stacked bales is those bottom bales, they don't get a lot of air movement sometimes and they're not stored correctly and they'll get mold and you don't want to feed that to your horse. All right, switching gears, let's talk about what impacts the nutritional value of your horse's hay. And here's a list, and we're gonna go through some of this. The types, grass versus legume, the stage of maturity, so that's plant growth. The species, because you're gonna have plants that grow during the warm season, so your spring, summer, and then your cool season, going into autumn, early winter. Depends on where you live in the world. The time of day at cutting can impact nutritional value. The conditions during the cutting and how it was stored, but, for this lesson, we really wanna focus on type and, and then we're gonna talk about stage of maturity. The types of hay, typically you, you will hear or see grass versus legume. So those are two different types of plants and the common grass type hays we see is things like Bermuda grass or Timothy, orchard grass, tall fescue. There's many different species of grass hays around the world. Legume hays, a lot what you're going to see is alfalfa or you will get some clover. Now, as I said, these are two different types of plants. So just looking at the visuals, you can automatically see, oh yeah, grass hay, legume hay. If you look at on the left-hand side of the grass hay, just starting the root system, you can see as many fibrous and it spreads right out where the legume hay has a taproot. What's also interesting about legume plants is they will fix nitrogen from the atmosphere, meaning they draw it from the atmosphere and go through the root system and put nitrogen in the soil. So it's very good for pastures and everything like that, which we'll cover in an, in an advanced course later. But you can also see the differences in leaves, stems, and even flowering. So they are definitely different types of plants that give different nutrients in different levels. When we look at a hay-based diet for a horse, just hay, nothing else, a horse at maintenance, so this is one that's not being ridden or exercised or being pushed, just their basic diet, a grass hay should meet their caloric and protein needs. You can see in these graphs, just the grass hay is just meeting over 100% of the calorie needs and then a little bit of extra protein, which is okay. When we mix these hays, meaning we take some grass, so let's say Bermuda grass and take some alfalfa and we mix it and put it in a feed bag for a horse and they eat both, we can see we can increase those calories and increase that protein. Now, if we feed just straight legume hay like alfalfa, you can see for horse at maintenance, we're greatly exceeding the calorie and protein needs of that horse. But now let's say this typical riding horse is being exercised, being schooled, you're riding it for several days, you know, different disciplines, but moderate level of work, not extreme, but not light, it's in that middle ground. 
if we look at that example of the grass mixed and legume haze, you can see where the grass haze might not quite be meeting that horse's needs, at least with its calories. And then with the protein, yeah, it, it should be. But if we mix the haze, we could just exceed their caloric needs and we're definitely exceeding their protein needs. And then with legume hay, you can see we're, we're meeting and exceeding greatly the protein needs of that horse. So in this first lesson, we just wanted to take a look at what good quality horse hay is and the differences between grass and legume hays and what that means when you're feeding just a forage-based diet to a horse at maintenance and moderate work. In the next lesson, we're gonna give you some more examples and look at this further, so look for that.